Hello and welcome to this video on the random step made in collaboration with Steady State Fate. It's six high performance analog sample and hold circuits spread across three channels in a 4HP Eurorack module. Let's check out what's to come and some of the patches and many uses for sample and hold in the modular system before we dive into it. <laughs> I'm really proud to present Random Step. It's something we've been working on for over a year and an idea that's much older than that. And the original idea was to take a single trigger and provide lots of stepped random voltages to animate, humanize, and modulate your patches. There's lots of really compelling musical reasons to want or need lots of sample and hold, like this really beautiful melody that forms from a happy accident, simply sampling an LFO. <laughs> And of course, with lots of random stepped modulation, you can be as subtle or as extreme in your modulations as you like. Now, Andrew at Steady State Fate has done some truly tremendous work in making such a high performance circuit. Now, notes and measurements and demonstrations of how accurate this is, is linked in the description and in the manual. And I'd also like to say, if you're a Patreon supporter exclusively for you, there's a PDF booklet documenting all the patches in this video, the concepts and the intentions. If you support on Patreon, a huge thank you for doing so. But enough of my fugly mug, let's check out what Random Step actually is. So looking at Random Step, the six high performance analog sample and hold and six pink noise generators are separated into three separate channels. Each channel has a trigger input, sample input, and a unipolar and a bipolar output. Now when it receives a trigger, both circuits will trigger a new voltage and output a new unique voltage at the unipolar and bipolar outputs. The unipolar is always random and always sampling its own pink noise source giving us a voltage between 0 to 5 volts. The bipolar output by default will sample its own pink noise generator. However, plugging in a sample input, it will override that noise and it will sample the external voltages. The unipolar and bipolar outputs are unique in that they're in no way rectified, scaled or offset versions of each other. They're two separate circuits. Trigger input one normalizes down the panel so we can get one trigger input to six random voltage outputs or three random unipolar voltages and three external audio or CV sources that we sample. There's lots of potential uses and reasons to have lots of sample and hold. The timing index is on screen if you'd like to skip around. And as always, I hope these provide ideas for you to take away and use in your system too. So without further ado, let's dive into some patches. So here's a patch with the square wave from the zero point oscillator, which is pulse width modulated to the left hand dipole and the sub across to the right hand dipole. As these are dipoles, the stereo dipole filter, I have a low pass and a band pass on both sides for this quad peak filter animation. <laughs> There is an envelope to the main stereo filter in. I can remove that. You can hear all this random animation going on. So here I'm using random step as six random gates. Now, of course, they're not gates. They're variable stepped random voltages or sampled external voltages, as we've seen. 
but any clock, trigger or gate input on sequences, envelopes, drum modules are just expecting, or in most cases expecting a rising voltage that goes above a threshold that they set within the circuit. So if you imagine these fluctuating step voltages bouncing around, some of them will go above this threshold, they'll come back down, they'll go above again, and that's this idea of them being random gates. Now of course try this into sequences, irregularly clocking sequences works really well, have it fire off longer envelopes, firing off function generators when plugging them into clock, trigger or gate inputs on other modules. Here we have a patch that aims to humanise and randomise complex voices, be those spread across multiple modules, or in this case just a single voice like rings. It's going to provide us a more exciting and varied tone that continues to shift over time. The idea of humanising is simply to subtly and randomly change parameters in a human fashion. So by attenuating random voltages that helps to create this more subtle humanising style modulation. And hopefully you've heard throughout here that even with a simple voltproctive sequence to rings, this modulation really brings it to life as opposed to each note having the exact same tonal properties. So here we're going to look at sampling modulation, looping envelopes or LFOs in this case, to build sequences. And I've stumbled upon just before recording, and God I jumped to hitting record quick for this one, a happy accident in the ratio of how fast I'm triggering my sample and hold and the speed of this LFO. I'm sampling this LFO, blue trace on the bottom of data, that's going off to a quantizer, giving me quantized pitch to my oscillator, and the always random unipolar output is simply controlling a low pass filter. Reverb in the background, but let's just listen to this really beautiful pattern that this has created. Let's pull out the random modulation of the filter so the tone in this patch won't change. Let's completely destroy this beautiful pattern. I'm going to speed up the rate that I'm triggering. You can see in here we're getting stepped versions of the LFO that we're sampling. Now if I keep my trigger rate the same but change the shape of the LFO, let's say something more descending rather than ascending. And again, let's change the rate of triggering here. And because the rate that I'm triggering the sample and hold and the rate of this looping envelope are completely unsynced, they're free running to each other, we're not getting the same repeatable patterns, but we are getting the general feeling of this descending LFO. Let's try a triangle-like shape. And again, play around with the rate of sampling this triangle-like shape. So play around with sampling modulation as a way of building new and unique sequences. So here I'm using random step as a downsampling clocked noise source. When I let this through at this VCA, We can see and hear this noise, and as I take this up through audio rate triggering, this is simply a square wave pulse from this oscillator. We can trigger this at high enough rates to get the pink noise coming through the unipolar or bipolar outputs. So it's quite nice to create percussion out of noise. 
and those varying noise colours are useful, either modulated or static. We can get all sorts of old retro game explosion effects. Now here's the patch from the teaser video that we released for Random Step about a week before this came out and I'd just like to play around before I go into what this patch is actually doing. Because this is so accurate, I'm actually sampling pitch without needing to re-quantize it, which is something I've not been able to do with other sample and holds before. I'll take you through what's happening in the patch. All of my sound comes from this chainsaw module, and I have an arpeggio sequence, which is the blue trace on data, this vault proctive input. And that's just what's happening. I'm playing an external keyboard. And then I'm splitting this blue arpeggio voltage into a buffered multiple and then coming into two channels on random step. Now I'm sending an envelope to my filter that's processing this chainsaw sound and the envelope is playing on each note in this arpeggio. That clock, same rhythm as the envelope, is coming into my clock divider here and on a divide by three I'm sampling the pitch voltage and that's the green trace here which sounds like... Here that's three pulses per note change. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Pulling out every third note from my arpeggiator. So it's giving me these overlapping arpeggiated chordal tones by holding every third note. If I play the actual arpeggio in again, and every third note, get this beautiful chordal overlap. Now every fifth note is then being sampled in this second channel here and I've used LED cables so you can see this divide 3 jump off this divide 5 and that's the yellow trace and yellow cables. So every fifth note sounds like this. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So let's say every fifth note, the yellow, against every third note, the green. Again, really nice, interesting chordal tones. Original arpeggiator back in as well. Playing some different chord tones here. Now here we're going to downsample audio with random step. Now my audio comes out into the sample input on the bottom random step channel and I'm using an audio rate oscillator to trigger this at audio rates and therefore downsample this audio. If I lower the rate of this clock that's triggering that bottom channel, All these lovely downsampled alias kind of overtones. Now, Volt Per Octave is going to the oscillator, but I can also split Volt Per Octave into the audio oscillator that is triggering the audio rates. And listen to the overtones now change in sequence with the pattern. These downsampled overtones are now relative to the pitches that are coming in. becomes a much more nice pitch tracked musical way to process and kind of destructively downsample audio. Nivel. 
والانس ان استطعتم ان تنفي يا ما خر الجن والانس يا ما خر الجن والانس ان استطعتم ان تنفي يا يا ما خر الجن والانس so here's a patch that i'm simply calling auto composition it's three triangle waves from three different oscillators with the unipolar outputs from the random step going to a quantizer across three channels and then each quantized voltage from each random unipolar output is going off to the oscillators to play a different pitch I'm using the bipolar outputs to come across and control the levels of these oscillators in my VCAs. I'm also going to play around with the notes available on the quantizer, so we're kind of auto-composing around different chord tones. So with three channels and six sample and holds, you don't have to just do any one of these things we've shown at once. We can create random gates as I'm doing here. It's that little snare sound that's bouncing off. We can create a clap on beats two and four by audio rate triggering one of the channels and taking the unipolar noise. We can down sample that noise as we've seen already. I can create a huge amount of modulation for my bass line and my filtering. I can sample a voltage to create my sequence. Also using that to control the level of this sound. It's sampling this rising voltage and that's the pitch, but it's also the amount of level coming through my VCA down sampling the bass on this bottom channel at audio rates. So in making sequences, sampling modulation, random voltages, noise coming out to make snares. Pretty much everything we've seen at once. Random Step is out at good modular stores around the world. If you grab a Random Step, be sure to tag DivKid and Steady State Fit in anything that you do. We'd love to check it out and share what you're up to too. Don't forget, Patreon supporters exclusively have that PDF patch book with lots of information in there about all of these patches. But that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.